and if you hear, yeah, 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 yeah,
And why do we do that? The studies have shown us that the more, again, we call them touches, though in the age of B2, time's up, we have change in that. Um, the more touches you get to a voter, the more likely they are to vote. In a perfect world, we would touch a, a likely voter between five to seven times. What we need for more realistically is about three to five. And that can be direct mail, phone calls, door to door. But the studies have shown us, and I actually did quote this from a study conducted by Yale University, uh, that face-to-face -face contact has a demonstrable effect on turnout. Studies have shown that there is a certain segment that will not vote unless you come and knock on the door and say, hey, I'm stopping for Jen Lunsford, state senate. <laughs> um, they either couldn't be bothered, maybe you kind of shame them a little, maybe you just say, hey, this is an average person like me, and they're coming and taking their time to knock on the door. Maybe there's something really special about this Jen Lunsford. Okay, so the actual, so that's kind of the big picture why we do it. But each canvas typically falls into one of three types. The first is identification, and that's determining the level of support for a candidate or for an issue. So you call someone, have you heard of, I'm gonna keep using Jen because she's easy. Have you heard of Jen? Do you know anything about her? You know, she wants to create a private public partnership so that middle class families have more access to affordable daycare. And then they say, whatever they say, yes, I'll go, I need more information, and you kind of rank them accordingly. Identification is typically the first touch because then it helps define and narrow your universe as you go forward. As time speeds by and volunteers wane, you start to kind of triage. And the way that we do that really is based on these identification. So if you're doing an identification canvas, it's going to be the biggest possible universe of the three that we're talking about. It could include kind of what people are colloquially calling, you know, the Obama Trump voters, so they might have voted Democrat in the past, maybe they voted Republican, they're swing voters, they're independent. They're not just necessarily registered members of the party for the person who can't say. Um, undecideds are, it, we rank them, and so the, the no people would be five and six, the maybes would be three and four, and the hell yeses are one and two. Um, I don't know why. It sounds like a weird number system. It gets really confusing. But that's, that's what Van does and Nation Builder, so that's what we have to do. Um, so we really want to identify those. Like if we get a one and a two, maybe they'll volunteer. Maybe they want a law sign. We sure as heck aren't going to waste that much more time on them. We'll call them don't, like, to remind them to vote, but we're not going to you know, you know, go try to persuade them there. Um, persuasion. It's not to fight. It's not to argue. It's not to try to convince my uncle why he should vote for the person I said he should vote for, even though I'm totally right he's not, but whatever. Um, <laughs> it's totally made a bad joke. Uh, it is to provide them information about the candidate. Um, a lot of times, I think, particularly in this environment, people are going to hone in on certain issues. Sexual harassment, guns, the obviously one to be the big one, uh, gun control, safety, uh, funding education, and should we be paying teachers or should we give them guns? Like, all, those are all kinds of things. Yeah, taxes, um, the city's budget will be out, the county budget will be out, there's a certain effect that a lot of, even the statewide candidates will have on that, so. There's going to be a lot of issues that people specifically care about. So it's in those persuasion comment or persuasion canvases where you're talking to voters about specific issues, specific, uh, specific talking points, really things that we think is going to resonate with this kind of smaller universe of people. So those are the threes and fours? You know, those are like threes and fours, yeah. Um, so you're not going to go to the six and you're trying to talk to them. Yet. No. There are, there may be certain cases Canvassing is as much an art as is a science. So for example, you normally would never canvass like a Republican five if you're a Democrat. Just for the point of, I'm always referring to as Democrat, that's what I am, that's what I know. Um, 
And typically, we tend to do more canvassing than Republicans. They tend to rely on TV. But for example, in this environment, we may throw some Republican women vibes in there. Because based on uh, Atlanta and Tom Jones and a lot of the other stuff in Virginia and Texas, a lot of the results we're seeing right now nationwide are showing that women are showing up and not less than others. So maybe we throw some, if they're left on the street, you know, for some Democrats, we just like not that approach it. Um, so there's kind of, and when you show up to Canvas, again, I'm doing this off from the perspective of a, a candidate, they should tell you who you're going to see so you're not blocked up. And the list that you'll get of people you're going to knock doors or call will have their registered party identification on it. Um, Yes, yeah, yeah. And we'll get into that some of that specific on the board, but yeah, you're not gonna go with so line. Um my favorite anecdote is most independents, including myself when I was 18, didn't realize that as an independent, you are a member of the independence party. You are not in fact independent from the system. Then you would be unaffiliated with one. So that's always a fun conversation I have with an independent voter the first time. Okay. Um, and then the final type of canvas is the Go TV, the Get Out the Vote canvas. That is usually a week or so before the election. Um, start calling people to remind them to vote if they have questions about their voting place, their eligibility. We try to stress having to make a plan. Because studies have shown that if you, and a member of Obama did like a big push about this, like, what's your voting plan? And try to make it cool. Um, but studies have shown that if you make a plan, you are more likely to actually go forward during lunch or after you pick up the kids, like, take it with you, fun family experience. <laughs> um, all of that, do you know where you're voting? Do you know where to park? Do you have any issues? Like, here's a number to call. <laughs> so that's more just reminding them that election day is coming up. Okay, who are we canvassing? Yeah, you, you can move it. The sunrise? I know the sun, yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. Okay. Okay. And now the sun will start to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the type of PMC that we're doing will uh, use a defined universe. So, we've got it kind of gets back to are they one, two, three, four, or five? The five or six are kind of the same thing. Again, it all depends on what it says in that reason. The actual physical list that you're going to get is called a turf, a walk list, a call list, it's a canvassing list, it's again any number of interchangeable things. And on that it is going to be a list if you're walking broken down by street, if you're calling alphabetical. Um, it is going to have someone's name, address, uh, sex, age, party registration. Then Depending on what type of canvassing you're doing, it's going to have some information for you to fill in. If you're walking, it's likely just to have one, two, three, four, five in boxes, and then like a space for notes. So if you go up the door, they're super enthusiastic about a candidate, when you walk away, you mark that one. Maybe they're so enthusiastic they want to volunteer, they want to on time. You put that in notes. Maybe you show up to a house and Big old scary dog, and you are not going in it. <laughs> you put that in the dogs. Dog. No. Um, the phone gets a little bit more complicated. There's still will be likely one through five, but then you get into some two letter codes, but they will always have a key on the board. Because DX is connected, moved. I can't even think of all of them because some of them are kind of you think you would never need them. But there's probably about 10 of these codes, but there will always be a code in the room where you are. Deceased. Deceased. Yeah. They like come up and they want to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, there's a ton. We try to account for every possibility, however, we want. And if that too, in case you go knock on a door and someone's gets away, someone's moved, whatever. We also, I apologize, I'm kind of talking about a lot of things at once, but a lot of it is sort of related. So when you're canvassing door, you're walking door to door, you're going to want to have some voter registration cards with you. 
Because say you show up to a house and the person who lives there has moved, but hey, this new person isn't registered when you're coming in. Well, here is this form for you. Yeah, 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 you fill it out, mail it in. Um, so that we still capture a vote, even if the person we intended to capture is, you know, moved away. Um, okay. Study that turf. I don't actually know what this is, but it's not just there. Um, so when you, the walking turf is going to list houses, or is going to list names by street, and there's also going to be close approximation of a map on the front of it. Um, so what we say is when you get that walking turf, sit down and take a couple minutes to figure out where it is that you're going. If you're familiar with it, if not, look it up on your phone, look it up wherever. We all, the party always has a district map so you can get a better idea. Just so that maybe, you, okay, well, we're going to stop on, you know, East Berlin. And it looks like that's a nice place to park. There's a lot of houses where you can get out and walk and circle back to the car. Or, you know, we are going to go to French Street. Well, those are a little farther apart. What if, like, if I have a partner, we split, one person goes to one side of the street, one person goes to the other. Just so that you kind of have an idea before you get out and you're not kind of parked on the side of the road trying to figure that out. Um, if, if, if you are canvassing with a candidate, the campaign staff should do a lot of this for you and really just kind of point you to where you're going. Not with, the, actually with the candidate, not for the um, okay. And I apologize because the materials I'm about to pass out for Congressman Sonder, um, because that's the information that I have. So, Just kind of 
accept it with a smile and move on. Um, yeah. So I mean, these are when again when you're canvassing for a candidate or for an organization, when you show up, they should go through all of this with you. If they do not, I would recommend taking a few minutes to familiarize yourself with it. But assuming most people will take over with you. Um, one thing too, I always kind of have in my back pocket, even though there is a script, I always have at least one reason why I am taking time out of my busy life and the responsibilities that I have in the 19 million things on my to-do list that I could be doing. But instead, I am walking door to door or making phone calls for this particular person. I managed Maritza Chicago's campaign in town court two years ago. I didn't know her that well. Why did I do it? So I was super impressed by her. And then she told me, and now I work at this court, so I know that, all the family court judges are white people. The family court litigants, not so much. I walk in there intimidated when I am the bench in small white. And I'm a lawyer. I went to school for this. Now imagine you're at the most difficult period of your life, and you walk in, and there's not a single person that looks like you, or understands where you grew up or understands what you're dealing with. So I was like, okay, oh, sweet. Let's do this. And so people would ask me, that's what I would say. People, you know, also it's kind of my subtle jab at you know, getting on the other guy, but we always run for something and not against someone. But if you can, while you're at it, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. This is, And then it also feels like, okay, well, then no, I'm married. I didn't just 
walk that door for nothing. Um, and all of that would, will be provided to you by the organization that's, that's doing the campus. Um, same thing, the turf, walk list, whatever. That'll all be provided to you. Um, okay, so I'm kind of missing stuff. What you actually do. So you have your walk list, you know where you're going, you pull up in front of that person. You just walk up to the door and knock on the door. I had a friend of mine, she works for Planned Parenthood across the state. She recommends singing happy birthday twice in your head in between knocks so that you know when to knock a second time. Um, Hi, is James, Hi, is James McCollum? Oh, yeah, that's me. Hi, I'm Heather. I'm volunteering with North Carolina Democratic Committee, and I want to talk to you about Jen Lutzberg. She's running for state senate in your district. She's running against her funky. She's a working mom. She is looking for alternatives for affordable, affordable daycare for middle class, people who don't want subsidies. She is pro the New York State Health Act. Do you have any questions about that? Um, she is Safe act to get all this kind of depends on who you're talking to. Uh, she doesn't want you to have guns, she wants them to have better pay and more resources. Like, do you think that's someone you can support in November? Awesome, great, you love her. Do you want to volunteer because she's really cool and we get does? All that. Um, if you have never done it, it, it the first, the hardest thing is always kind of taking that first step. My first experience door, going door to door was actually getting petitions. I was a Brighton committee member. You have to get petitions for yourself. So you have to be like, hey, hey, can you sign this so that I can represent you? Because technically that's what the law says in order for me to be a Democrat, like committee member, you need to sign this for me? Or hey, can you sign this judge? Oh, you've got a DUI and you hate him? So can you sign the other one instead? <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, and you cannot, like I have had walk lists where I knocked on two whole streets, not like two houses. But that second house, it's, you know, an older woman who says to me, you know, I remember stories growing up and like fighting for this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And it's young people like you who, you know, make me glad that I fought that fight. And then you walk away and like tear up. <laughs> and you're like, oh, all that work I just did, you did so validating. And then you knock on like 10 more houses and no one's on that. <laughs> or you knock on a house and they can literally see you and they still don't come to the door. Them, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the best one I had was doing it for Louise two years ago and I had the little car, so I was supposed to leave and they came to the door. And so I put the little car and she, I walked down and before I left at all, she opened the door and I turned back and she took the car, she looked at it. She put it in her recycle bin. Look at that. Walk away. It was, and then she recycled it? And then she, was, she recycled it, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, I went out and got it out of the recycle bin. Okay. Thank you for recycling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was like, yeah. they were you right in the eye. Yeah. But it's, I don't care about this. I don't know. And I think this year's probably going to be. most difficult to deal with that because we are now realizing you really can't just sit by and do nothing and we recognize the privilege of being able to say that but the people saying it don't recognize the privilege of being able to say that so it's probably going to be um, not uh, a little bit more of an exercise in frustration this year but on the same token I think there are that many more people who aren't afraid to say I am a Democrat, and I am going to vote, and I haven't voted before, but look where that got us. So I think it's, it's going to be a bit more disparate in the experiences that you have, but I am very hopeful you will have more of a positive perception than perhaps in the past couple of years. Um, so yeah, so you, you, you talk, again, you don't have to know everything. Sometimes the candidates don't need to know what their own positions all the time. Accidentally, some on purpose. Um, so before you go out, like, you know, on the back of your clipboard, like maybe write the, the website or a phone number just so that, oh, okay, well, hey, here's the website. If people ask about donating, you don't take money. You can donate online. You can call this person. Write in your notes, someone will call them. Trust me, we want their money. 
We just don't want to put the responsibility of keeping all of that on you, plus there's like recording requirements, and it just, it's, I'm treasure, I'm Jen's treasure, it's a pain. Um, I love her. But there's just, it's just, we don't want to put that on you guys. You're doing enough. We don't want to like put the federal campaign election law on you as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so you have your conversation. When you walk, when you walk away, that's when you do your notes. You rank them in terms of how you think they responded. It's totally subjective. There is no right or wrong answer. It's not like I need to go back and check your work. Like, oh well, you gave that a three. I think it should have been a two. <laughs> um, the fives and sixes will be very clear. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I was going to say, Louise's race, if you even knew who the Republican was, you'd be a five, but it's all about to change. Um, and if there's any notes, so, oh, they answered at the side door, they want a long sign, they had a question about this, they said to, you know, drop dead, never come back, they sent a dog after me, you know, any, anything like that that we will want to know in the future, yes? So somewhere on the list, there's space for writing those notes. Yes. No, yeah. I meant to print them up, but the way that they're kind of down the page like this, it's kind of your name, address, email, phone number, whatever that they have, age, sex, party registration, and like a weird blank. And then the one through five, if there's more check boxes, and then like a notes section. Or there might be a barcode here, but there's always going to be like a weird blank in the middle. So that'll be a space for you to write. If you do get a walk list with a barcode, just so you know, um, Van has the capability so you can scan them and the names populate in the system so it's less data entry that needs to be done. Uh, but they don't always work, so it doesn't really help that much. Democratic Party. Um, yeah, so but yeah, there's definitely plenty of room. I mean, you don't have to like write a novel, just like one, as, long as, as long as you understand what the notes are so you can follow up with someone if necessary. Um, well, I don't know. The follow-up person would be somebody that wouldn't be me. Right? No, no, no. So I've got to make whatever I write clear enough to somebody who wasn't with me. Yeah. And if so, when you usually we do set times for people to bring their packets back, mm -hmm. so we can capture that information, we can update our records in real time. If you're not able to finish, so then we can we know to send someone back out to to that turf. Um, and whoever that person is, you can call them a canvas captain or something equally illiterate and lame. Um, they will kind of run through your turf list with you. So you're standing there, and if there's something they don't understand, they'll follow up with you on that. Um, okay. So collect that data. And that, and it is kind of frustrating on phone calls too when you're calling and it's disconnected or it's the wrong number. Louise's campaign two years ago went through and like kind of culled a lot of that, but it's still useful because. We don't want to keep calling those disconnected numbers. And the closer we get to election day, we're going to have what's called predictive calling, which means the a machine, the cloud, I have no idea, keeps calling until someone picks up. So that eliminates some of the time, you know, if those disconnected numbers have been removed. Um, that was more than you think? Yes. Another question. I did some calling, um, not for a system it was like it was out of state and the number was on my computer and I was yeah. calling from my home and a lot of the numbers I called nobody picked up or sometimes I got voicemail that I could leave a message but I got a lot of no answers at all. Is that also I would guess that's how a phone can seems to work too. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, like numbers they don't recognize. Yeah. Right. And like depending on who you talk to um, they'll tell you, you get a third of people to answer, you get a half of half the people to answer. It's never as much as we want it to be, unfortunately. But that just makes me keep calling. Does it just call landlines? To the extent your cell phone number is publicly available, your cell phone will be in there. Unfortunately, it is a lot of landlines, which is kind of a double-edged sword, because one, People with landlines tend to be older, they tend to vote more consistently. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of people are getting rid of their landlines and we have not yet quite updated to that technology. I think the numbers came from the Board of Elections when you registered to vote. 
That's part of it. But um, phones are old sometimes. Yeah. I've been wearing security for 40 years. So yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. But it's but van. Sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's it depends. Yeah. Van itself. It's van and nation builder. That's kind of like the democratic computer system, voter access system. That is based off of the information that's fed into it. So the well-funded campaigns. I mean, we're talking like Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton. Martin O'Malley, God bless him, that fourth guy, no one remember. <laughs> um, they buy a lot of lists. I mean, all the parties do this. Magazines. Oh, we're still on Facebook. Now that's a thing now. <laughs> um, can't even. Uh, and that is all fed into the system, and then it's pushed out. So it's not just one source. So it's they go over to yes, they can. Pretty what much. Is that from? You would yeah. be, if you typed your own name in Savannah, you'd be disturbed by how much information that they have and how accurate they can guess your how you would vote on certain issues. It's the science behind it, no one really understands it. It's kind of again like that art science balance. The amount of publicly information, publicly available information on any given human is horrible. Um, so yeah, sorry. Happy happy notes. Uh, but yeah, no, it's not just from your voter file. Although ironically, the Board of Elected Voter Files do tend to be more updated in kind of like the short term because they do purge more regularly than many of us. Um, and just for purposes of anyone's wondering why or wondering how at least in Monroe County, they send two letters. If you don't respond to the first letter, they send you a second letter, then they purge you from the voter roll. They don't just purge you. Willy nilly. And they wait a long time before they even send that first letter. It's yeah. Like years. Before you, I mean, a couple election cycles that you've missed before they do anything. Yeah. That came up in 2016. They do it more often, though, in areas where they assume people are moving more. Yeah, they do. I think they still have a city. That's kind of annoying. Yeah. Kind of it's kind of is, you know, on um, um, disparate impact versus disparate intent. Mm -hmm. The one good thing about Monroe County, we are the only county that allows you to come to go to court to get an affidavit to vote. So it's not like a, they can't bounce it basically. In other counties you can vote and they can throw it out, but in Monroe County if you get the court order, it's like a regularly counted ballot. And you get that affidavit at the polling place. Well that's an affidavit ballot, so that's oh. ones that they can bounce. Um, so but if you come to the party, we fill out the paperwork for you, I can do it every year. We go to the judge, we get them to sign off on it. You come back and take it to the, to the polling place, and they give you the regular ballot, like the traditional ballot, and you feed it in the machine. So it's the way to guarantee that your vote is counted. So, so it has to so, be done in advance. If you no, can't, that day. That day? Yep. Mm -hmm. people, but people have to run around that day? Yeah. Well, um, we have attorneys at the party. I mean, usually how many men to show up. Um, we have a system, we have a form, you come in, fill it out. Go back and do whatever you do. We'll go to the court. We go to the judge. We call you when it's ready. You come back and get it. You go to your polling box. If you know anyone who thinks that they're already purged, you can always fill out the paperwork in advance of election day, and then they have to come once. Yeah. Could they just re-register? Or you're talking about after October 14th? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And there's a lot. I don't. I don't know what happens in Albany or wherever. But people have like pictures of their register. Like, this is the voter like voter registration form. I don't know why I took a picture of it, but I did. And then when they shook their poll, they're not on there. Okay, well, here's the form that they fill out. I don't know if they took a picture of them and threw the bail out or who knows. We don't ask many questions. Um, actually, two years ago, we had a family. They were refugees. And basically, like, no one told them they could vote. Like they became citizens and like no one said, oh by the way, you can vote now. So they showed up on election and like we want to vote, this is where we live. And they're like, did you register? No. No, that's really odd though, because my friends who have been giving voters and they go to every naturalization ceremony yeah. and they give a big speech about voting and they stand there with forms. Yeah. So that's really interesting that they didn't understand that at the time. I got it. They, they, they missed it. We, they have to swear that what they're telling us is true and it's a court document, so they're subject to perjury, so that's usually good enough for me. 
hashtag black girl magic, hashtag diverse fire chords, hashtag whatever. No more horny. No. Um, I keep saying that and everyone's like, you know you're right on the I didn't think. <laughs> but yeah, but it really kind of depends. We I should talk to Jamie Ryan and share the pretty about this. It really depends on what kind of campaign that you're running. Obviously, natural <coughs> influence is always better because then you also kind of have the more personal connection and you can shame them on election day. I'm a big fan of shaming people on election day. Did you vote? Did you vote? Yeah. Did you vote? Really? It can take five minutes out of your day? It can five minutes. You know, people like, one vote, Virginia! One vote! One vote, Virginia!
I think we usually stop calling between like eight and nine. It's, it's, it's kind of, like, again, like one where it's more of an art choice. If you have a list and like all of a sudden it's 815 and no one's picking up the phone, you can stop. Um, but most of the campaigns will take that into consideration before they send you out. And uh, do you, do you, if you're walking, do you stop at dusk or I mean, can you? Can you go till 8 o'clock even if it's dark? <laughs> um, again, that would be up to you. I don't think we would really encourage people to be out walking after dark just because there's obviously safety concerns. Um, also, it's a lot of work. Yeah. We usually have people go in like two or three hour spurts mm -hmm. unless you are part of a campaign, whether as a volunteer or paid staff, then you can walk from Vesco Bond and whatever if you sign up for this. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we usually do like two or three hour spurts and then come back around lunchtime and then we send out another ship. My other question is, do you know anything yet about who's going to run for Louise's seat? I don't think we even know how the process is going to work yet. Do we even know if we'll have a special election or if we'll stay? I've heard literally every answer that it'll be a special election, that it'll be appointed. Technically, it had the, if Louise was still alive, her, camp, her petitions are due at the end of this month. So we're not sure if the clock is reset on that. I mean, Jamie Romeo, the party chair, may very well know, but that information is not trickled down to. I didn't think the governor could appoint for the House. I thought it had to be a special election or he could leave the seat open. Yeah, that's what it seemed like in the paper. Yeah. yeah. Says, yeah. I'm not, I, honestly, I, I'm not sure. We're honestly talking about by the time a special election is pulled together, it's not going to be until May, and then it's Five months, six months before the term's over. Well, the paper talked about what happened there at Madison specifically. Okay. But I think that was a promo. I think that was probably, I don't know, who was, was it Pataki or somebody? I don't know who was the governor then. Um, but if the paper said when that happened, they did the special election, but it was on election day. And the difference was he became congressman the next For day. For two months? Mm -hmm. Until waiting. But then I don't understand. I guess then he just. Right through. That's like it was like you got yeah. an extra little bit. But in the, mean, in the meantime, the, uh, in the meantime, we would be without a representative. Yes. yes. Until, okay. My thing, my yes. For what this is worth, my opinion is unless there's a candidate who pops up, Democratic candidate who pops up with a significant war chest and a real chance to win in November, they keep it empty because it's not like. We're in the minority. Louise didn't, I mean, God bless her, she had her own like personal like magnetism and power. She didn't really have any real public, real institutional power. Right. So it's not like, I mean, we're not talking about like Jeff Sessions seat in Alabama right. when they, you know, if they had one point, you know, one Senate majority. We're talking about, yeah, she's the ranking member on the Rules Committee, but if it's someone's not coming to the floor because Paul Ryan says no, the junior council person from Rochester's one. Right. But I don't know. I've heard a ton of names. I've heard people who aren't running. I, I just been this. I was talking to my boss about this. Um, I know she's 88, or she was 88, but no one was ready. No one. I mean, to I because well, before I got involved, I've only been involved in Monroe County politics for about five years. Um, I'm in Buffalo, and when I first got here, I was like, she seems great. Super cool fan. Why isn't she like working on a succession plan? Right. But then the more I got to know her, it just all floated away because you're like, she's gonna live forever. She's awesome. And I <laughs> want her to be like my grandmother. This is perfect. And you know how real shame that is? I really believe because I'm I adore her too. I want her to live forever too. I campaign for her every time. But if she had stepped aside and she had endorsed the next person, mm -hmm. the next person would have won on her coattails. Mm -hmm. I, to be, again, this is just Heather new speculation. I think had Hillary won in 2016, she wouldn't have run this year. Had, it had or you know, even right. in the current environment, had it not looked like the house wasn't going to turn blue, she might not have run this year. I think, when did she like 2014 with the senior? Yeah. She mm -hmm. needs to like, not a bench, that sounds ridiculous. Okay. Like redeem from that. Mm -hmm. 
But what was always presented to me, like the kind of public explanation, was she always thought that it was up to the voters of the district to decide which to represent them. One, one congresswoman, I uh, was just on TV, one congresswoman who was talking about her said that she had, she had, a police had told her that um, since her husband died, she, I mean, the job was for life, mm -hmm. and she planned it to stay there. And that was 14 or 13 or whatever. That was that year. That was the yeah, election that she almost lost. So she was just that right now. Right, but I mean, well, no, when her husband died, so right, right. that's when it became her life. Because that was the election she almost lost, I'm pretty sure, yeah. was when her husband died. The only reason I, yes, because I was working, a friend of mine had just got a job with on her staff, and her husband died, and well, like, oh my god, she's going to retire, like, what is, and my friend's like, I just took a job. <laughs> but he took it, and then all said, well, and now I want to do it. I don't know. I saw the thing about Capasano in the paper. Um, oh, for God's sake. People, had, there was a, uh, in the DNC, I don't even know. Someone saying Galasano, and he's run for governor three times. Um, obviously, Mayor Warren, although. He is the Independence Party. That's yeah. his party, Independence Party. Well, here it's Steve Corns. But, yeah, but, but, you know, but I mean, he was, oh, that's what he was. I have a lot of strong feelings. Um, Mayor Warren's been mentioned. People I know who work for her don't think she'll take it or she'd be interested. Duffy. I heard Duffy. I don't know. Duffy, Duffy. Duffy. this week. A few people. Joe, I think Morelli? Morelli would be a name, but why would he? That'd be a demotion. Harry Bronson. Also, Harry isn't, Bronson. Aren't there, don't, yeah. Isn't there like an age that they want Congress people to be? Because you're not supposed to be too old. You should be 65 and more. I mean, there's no like constitutional. I know, but yeah. in, in political. I think, sir, I think just right. as an. As the nature of the institution, people typically involved in local politics first, then they ascend to the House when they're a little bit older, and then they ascend to the Congress, or to Senate, which is why everyone says, like, a million. Um, no offense. Um, so I think that's just kind of like the nature of the process, but I mean, kind of like, kind of like 34. Yeah, we love the process. Yeah. Like, well, but I, that's, that's my understanding was you want them younger because you want to be able to say that they're going to be yeah. in for 20 years. So you don't. Some, I just remember somebody was saying so and so could run for Congress. They said, no, he's too old. No. They wouldn't, he's too old. Yeah. So I, I have, so I have no idea. The Gallus, I mean, obviously I'm a, I'm a Democrat. The Gallus on thing is interesting because the point that they made is even if he did it for two or three terms, because he's in his late 70s. He has the name recognition and the money to maybe actually get some sway that a you know brand new. Except that the man moved to Florida and wouldn't pay the taxes. And the people are taxed too much, according to him. Not yet. Yeah, that's what I was, I was talking to a friend of mine, my best friends at lunch. And I'm like, Children's Hospital, Goose Poop Taxes. Children's Hospital, holy. What, well, didn't, didn't he endorse Trump? And it works for Chris Collins. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so did Tom Baxter. He ran. No. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true, but it's that chair is different that's from the Thomas. Thing to Thomas to that's true. Yeah. That's I, 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 much of an impact on people. I personally, like, I personally have struggled with Todd. Oh, we're glad we're busy. So, <laughs> um, but then I, I work, I do almost entirely to myself. So Willow, the Mass Events Agency, had someone that worked there and had spoken about him doing an event with them. And then I actually sat down and was like, what the age, dude? Um, and we talked about it a lot. And really it was his position on law enforcement interacting with the Mass Events victims that really brought me to him. So it wasn't actually that nice. You know, still new. Um, so I have no idea. The answer to your question is, I have no idea. I don't know if anyone has any idea what's going to happen. No, no one has declared in the, 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 the Democratic Party. Yes. No one has not that, but not that anyone wrote a spell. Yeah, too, too soon. We, we all do a lot now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs>
What's the quickest way for us to find out when decisions are made? Uh, <laughs> is that a dumb question? No, no idea. No, no, I'm serious. <laughs> I do. I honestly, my guess based, I don't know. I don't know what the time frame looks like. Typically, when you're thinking about running, you start to have conversations with the party, with uh, Joe Morelli, with Congressman Slaughter, um, with the mayor. You have conversations with the key stakeholders, certain with the leaders of certain local and city communities, key stakeholders that you need to find. And once that process starts happening, names start kind of flowing out. But that's when you have all the time in the world to figure out whether or not they're going to work. And I'm not sure what the time frame is going to look like in this. And then you still have to do a petition, like after they announce whoever it is, and Thank you, David. Thank you. 